Hey everyone, it's Joe Dezayas here from The Automator, and I had some exciting news. We finally finished our GUIs Are Easier course. Now, GUIs Are Easier because it's it's version two, right? Yeah, and that's what's right. Really amazing is if you think about it, the Windows controls are the most robustly tested GUIs on the planet by far, right? That and the is fact correct. With AutoHotKey in V1, you would connect to them with our command methods and stuff. In V2, they're all objects, and it's so right. much simpler to look at. And so that's why we were really excited to be able to create this course and get it out there. In this video, we're going to cover four reasons why you should be considering adding a GUI to your tool. Um, and then we're also going to do, give a little demonstration of like what we're talking about, because it's easy to say, but when you start seeing it, you understand like, you know, there's some really yeah. good benefits. It is oh, like the concept is always easy, but unless you see it, a concrete example of where you would do that, uh, it gets a little bit tricky. A lot of people just code something really quickly and don't think about the GUI, but then we look at it and uh, and I showed you that recently. I saw a tool that we had and then I said like, you see, these four things might be a little GUI that we don't have to um, write this on the, on, the, on the text file every single time. So that's what we're going to look at. And stick around to the end. So if you're interested in getting the course, we'll have a coupon code for you that'll save you, I think it's 15% off. And it's on sale right now too. So yeah, excellent. All right. So um, right now, one of the biggest things about the using GUIs with AutoHotKey is because it is very easy to build in AutoHotKey. There's a lot of other languages out there that can create graphical user interfaces. Uh, but most of them, trust me, it is, a, it is painful. I actually, last time we, we were looking at some examples in Rosetta code, I remember, right? right. It's like, dude, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of things in there that you have to do just to get one button up, right? And in a Rosetta code, it's like at the start of, was it C sharp? I think that was like include, 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 include. There's like five or six includes. And then there was the code. But I'm like, Isaias, if you go look at those includes, each of those are like hundreds of lines long. It's, it's yeah. crazy. Yes, not a hotkey, not... <laughs> you got like four lines and you're done. I mean, it's you know, well, and that's the thing out of hotkey kind of like hides all these, right. including right. kind of things because we're connecting straight into the yep. Windows controls. Which, as you mentioned previously, it is kind of like the most tested controls out there. They look ugly and they look old, right. but that's right. because you know, because they are made to to work right? right so even now 2023 i still see some tools that are written with those controls and if you talk about automating those tools i have not found any other programs easier to automate than any than those written in auto hut with with the windows 32 controls any all those new controls as soon as the interface is not good enough we find ourselves having a lot of troubles automating that so yeah it's really annoying but let's take a look at what we mean and why so there you you said that there was four reasons why we might consider this so what would be the reasons well the first one which is pretty obvious right you want to you made this really cool script that you want to be able to share with other people but sometimes depending on what you're doing there might be some subtle differences you want to apply and that's not easy for most people to go in and go oh i'm going to go make a change here i'm going to go do whatever if you give them a gui anybody can use it yes now another one is that very likely and i i don't know if you have think, thought about this but it, it reduces errors because i can constrain what the user can give me as an input. So instead of letting you type whatever you want, I can give you a drop down list. And those are the options. You have to choose one of those. And that's it. Um, that means that you also don't, that the user doesn't have to know all the options. When they pick on the drop down, then they will see the options there and they'll say, oh, that's the one that I can use. The, those are the other things that you can do. Yeah. And the next one is just the speed that you, when you go to do, if you're going to go, make a change to your script you have to go find the part in there and stuff in a gui you all you do is you put up the things you want them to be able to change and it's simple click pluck you know you click it and it's updated and you're not having to go memorize what this syntax was and what do i need to change here and which there. line it was right. <laughs> because you sometimes have... you make it you make it good on yourself sometimes that you have the script and at the top of the script you have all the variables that you want to change but sometimes, uh, you know, you create a script and then, oh, this is the one thing that we have to change. What? In line 150. <laughs> and then, yeah, why why do that? So those are the reasons why you would like to do that. But let me show you. Well, the basically. last one, it, it's okay. subtle. But it's, it's very similar to the reduced errors in that 
you can limit, let's say for some reason you don't want them to be able to do some other stuff, you can control what they can and can't change, right? So sometimes you want to lock it down of what they can do. And so that's a nice other, other right. Time. That that is correct. So it, it, we 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 I usually thought about you know reducing errors, but and I mentioned something about locking it, but not exactly what you mean. Like not only, yeah, because th there's an example, and, and the example that we're gonna show has to do with a tool called FFmpeg that has so many options. You just have to put one wrong option, and the tool is not gonna work. Like yeah, so I want to limit. From all the possibilities, I'm going to limit the range of how many you can use because I want this tool to do this one thing good, right? And 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 basically, and that's the idea. Let me let me show you what I mean. So um, if we have, uh, I opened up a web page here about a quick guide to use FFmpeg, and if you scroll down, you will start seeing that they are going to start putting out some command line. Because those, though, this tool only works in the command line, right? Now, the the interesting part about this is that AutoHotKey can run a command line tool. Now, as we progress through the tool, uh, you will see that the inputs are getting longer and <laughs> more convoluted. And if and, and this is remember, this is the simple one, right? So now you're talking about copying the streams and so on, extracting audio. Okay, fine. We, in the end, created a tool that, and let me just show you really quickly. This is the command line thing that we are using. So this is the, the command that we're using with FFmpeg. But notice that we have a few variables here. Now, I extracted this from the original script, but all of those are being taken in. And what we were doing at the beginning is just setting the path here. See, and then the it, and then the command would be this, and the encoder is going to be MP4 or, or whatever it was. So, so the process speed is five. And then if you wanted to run the tool again, you would have to come to the script and change those again. And, and then we decided, hold on, let's make it a little bit simpler. And this is where the example actually comes in. Um, we created this little guy right here that... It just gives you a few drop downs and that's it. Now you just drag and drop a file in there and it will process that for you. And it, and it could be many files. And this is one of the other things. You don't have to run the script one at a time. Isaiah, we didn't talk about this. Do you have Handbrake installed? Handbrake? No, I do not. No, okay. I haven't seen it. But Handbrake, it also <laughs> is a GUI wrapper for FFmpeg, I believe. It's using FFmpeg. Yeah, yeah. I think the problem we is yeah, Handbrake has so many options. The, like you almost have to really, you know, really get into the tool to understand how to do some simple stuff. And so it, the, the, I think the equivalent would be our tool is limiting what you can change. It's, it's limiting to only the most important things that you're probably going to use. Right. Right. In the break, there's so many presets and so many options yeah. that it's just overwhelming where you're like, I just want something to just you know, shrink my files. Just side. work, right? And this is the funny thing. Like I went to their website. I see here like the presets. Look at the list of presets, right? And right. then you have all the options that you can do for the summary dimensions, filters, video, dimension, everything like there. And then they keep saying like even more features right. and stuff like that. And the images that they're showing here are not even half of what you can do with the thing. Right. Like, it's right. like they have so many options, but sometimes I just want to do one thing and one thing only. And that is, okay, I want to set the speed and Hey, look at that. I don't have to know what speeds there are. I just have a list and I pick one of them. Okay. I want yeah. fast. And I actually struggled on that one of like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't list all of them. Maybe I should list like four or three. Right. That way the ones that you use the most. Right. Yeah. And just imagine you have to type that. So here, and where the speed is, here's the process speed. It says the preset. You have to type that in um, if you were on the command line. Now here, you just, hey, just pick one. Now, the audio encoding, if I remember correctly, I did say, you know what, in the next one, I, I limited it to what, to me, made sense. Right. Uh, there, there's so many. Yeah, you can do way too many options on that. So, again, now, the, the encoder here, which is 264 and 265, you have thousands of encoders so Lots so not only that right yeah and now the other yeah. really cool thing about this whole thing with our gui 
you can drag one or many videos, just drop it on this and it loops over all of them. So that, that is the cool thing. It's one or more. And the tool will just loop through this command and do them one at a time. And this is the other thing. If you're doing it yourself, like you're typing, you might write one of those options wrong, right? So you don't want that. Yeah, you want to copy paste, but then you paste something wrong. You don't want that either. Just select what you want and each of those things become a variable that later on, when I hit or drag and drop a file, the those variables are already pre-filled with the information. The right. only thing that I have to pass is the file path that is taken when I drag and drop the files. So that's it. And because this is our tool, I said, hey, let's make these default values what my defaults usually are. So usually right. I don't even have to change anything. I just start it, drop my file in. Yeah, that is correct. So in and general, by the way, yeah. Isaias has seen it because he laughs because I often show him it'll take like a gigabyte file down to like often like a third the size, you know, of that what the true. other one was. It's crazy how good it compresses it and it still looks good. But anyway, yeah, GUIs are amazing. It can really help you streamline what you're trying to do with complex things. That is right. So what we're going to do is that we're going to um, give you again, as we mentioned, a discount so that you can go ahead and take a look at how to create those little GUIs because those things, uh, creating one like that looks like that, it will not take you more than 30 minutes. Uh, of course, the functionality of it might yeah. take you a little bit longer because some functions are a little bit trickier to create. But if you're wrapping around a command line interface like this into a GUI, that's a very simple thing to do. And, and I guess... Uh, if you know how to organize your GUI like this, which is what we teach in the video, it's not going to take too long for you to figure it out. Yeah, our course, by the way, it has, um, what is it, 62, I think, videos. They're three to nine minutes long, depending on the topic that we're covering. Uh, but it's it also comes with, I think, 30 or 40 example scripts that you work through yes, in the course. It's about four and a half hours long. So it's it's not a short course, but... Isaias walks through all the basic controls, some of the even a little more advanced ones, what we just touch on and we don't go too deep because it's just module one. Uh, yes. But it, it allows you to, to kind of compartmentalize and jump around if you're looking for a drop down versus a radio box. You don't have to go linearly. You can kind of jump around on some of them. That's right. I guarantee that if you look at the, co uh, the course, you can build this GUI yourself in about 30, 40 minutes at most because I cover how to drag and drop files into it. I cover how to create a, a progress bar. I cover how to position the controls. So everything that you're looking at here, you can see it, uh, how I did something similar in the course as well. Yeah, and, and all of our courses come with a 200% money back guarantee. So if you're not right. happy with it in the first 30 days, just ask for a refund. Mm -hmm. and we don't pay you what you bought, you paid for it. We pay you double what you paid for it. <laughs> That's yeah. how sure we are that we got a good solid product. So check it out. Um, we also, I'll try to remember to put the link up here, but we just released a little mini tutorial. I think it was around 20 minutes long on creating yeah. GUIs in V2. And it's a good beginning, but you, I mean, we did our courses four and a half hours and we still didn't go deep, but we gave you enough to really get you started. And GUIs are amazingly powerful. And AutoHotKey, they're compared to other languages. I'm no programmer, but I've tried them in, in Python and a couple others. And they're so much easier in AutoHotKey. That is correct. All right. Check it out. Cheers. If you enjoyed the video, like the video or subscribe. We released videos twice a week with the largest AutoHotKey channel out there. And if you want a GUI done for your script, also, we do done for you work. So you can reach out to us. Cheers. Bye.